There is good reason why the running community of the Twin Cities is known as one of the best in the world. And in early October, it was proven once again when tens of thousands of supportive fans showed up to cheer on just as many runners. The weather was a little colder than years past as an early glimpse of winter was in the air. But it didn't matter as the bar was set even higher at the Medtronic Twin Cities Marathon. We will cover not just the marquee event, but all of the races and surrounding activities that made for a wonderful three days. So sit back and get comfortable because the show starts right now. Twin Cities in Motion is proud to partner with Medtronic for the Medtronic Twin Cities Marathon Weekend. Hi, I'm Carrie Tullison alongside Charlie Mahler, and for the next 30 minutes, we're going to be bringing you the best elements of this weekend's Medtronic Twin Cities Marathon Weekend. This year marked the 31st edition of the event, which annually gathers together the Twin Cities Marathon community. We have a lot to cover in this program. We have great races. We have some truly inspirational stories. But I want to start off on Friday at the Health and Fitness Expo. Are you Andrew? I am, yes. Great. You're good to go. Thank you. Would you like to try some organic, wholesome sweetener? Are you excited for the 5K or the 10K? Oh, the film! <laughs> hey guys, make sure you grab your caribou coffee to keep you warm on your race day. When you walk around the expo, you'll see plenty of proof of why this sport is truly for anybody. Case in point, a phenomenal program sponsored by Medtronic. It's called Global Heroes. For the seventh consecutive year, Medtronic has partnered with Twin Cities in Motion for the Global Heroes program. This program celebrates the passion and accomplishments of runners who benefit from medical technology. Our Global Heroes program every year is one of the main signatures of the work that Medtronic Foundation does worldwide. And that is to, to bring to the message to people worldwide that even with chronic disease, Life can be managed, disease can be managed, and life can be lived to its fullest. So on a day like today, we celebrate global heroes who prove this to the world. Even when there may be health issues that can cause um, long-term problems, lifelong problems, you don't have to stop life or lose the quality of life just because of heart disease, diabetes, other kinds of problems like that. The goal of our work follows the Medtronic mission, which is to alleviate pain, restore health and to extend life and I think Global Heroes really speaks to all three. People who literally take the metaphor of running and racing and showing that you know if you manage your disease state you're able to do anything, contribute back and enjoy life. This wonderful program has sponsored over 150 athletes from 23 different countries. And this year's Global Heroes include a man from right here in Minnesota. A man whose life is truly better because of running. I'm Don Sowell, I'm 63. I'm a 2012 Global Hero. I had kind of two uh, running lives. One, uh, I started in my mid-30s. I ran the first Twin Cities Marathon in 1982. And I ran about nine marathons back then. And I stopped running. And I gained over 100 pounds. And then, uh, in about 2004, I, I weighed over 300 pounds and I started uh, in a weight loss group and I started losing and one of the people had a goal of running the Twin Cities Marathon and I thought, um, I've done that before, that, that sounds like a good idea. And in the 2008 Twin Cities Marathon, I, uh, near the end, I started getting these uh, feelings of almost passing out and ended up going to the medical tent and discovered my heart rate was going down to 20 beats a minute. As soon as they saw how low my heart rate was, and uh, they put me right in the hospital and put the pacemaker in. 
Yeah, it was in January of 2009 that I had the pacemaker put in. Um, and, you know, five weeks after I had the pacemaker, I did run a 5K, it was very slow, and I did run Grandma's Marathon about six months after the pacemaker was installed. After that, I was able to function actually better with the pacemaker than before. Um, I've been able to improve my running times uh, over the last seven years so that I'm running uh, my best times right now. I'm 63 and I run about 2,000 miles a year. I just feel a lot better about myself, a lot healthier, uh, a lot more positive. Um, it's just easier to enjoy life when you're uh, active doing exercise. I'm not going for a, a personal best or a, a best time. I'm just out there to enjoy running, enjoy life, and uh, have a good time. We will have much more on Don later in the show. But up next, we move to Saturday, where there was a whole lot of fun for people of all ages. And remember, you can always find out about your favorite events and races by following Twin Cities in Motion on Facebook. Twin Cities in Motion is proud to partner with Medtronic for the Medtronic Twin Cities Marathon Weekend. I get really excited about all the volunteers that come and help us and all the spectators that come out and cheer and just when the start guns go off um, and the kids. Uh, Saturday, Saturday events, TC Family events is so awesome to have those little kids come out and run. And But it's seeing the anticipation at the start and then the joy of their goals at the finish. Welcome back to the show. I'm Charlie Mahler. One of the beautiful things about Medtronic Twin Cities Marathon Weekend is it's more than just one race. Saturday is full of events, and we'll get started where it starts with the TC 10 k Even on a chilly morning, who wouldn't want to be out there running? A great turnout for the first race of the weekend, the TC 10 k And you just see a mass of bodies heading away from the Capitol on John Ireland Boulevard. As always, the weekend isn't just about runners. The number of volunteers and fans was absolutely phenomenal, and it set the tone for the entire weekend. At just over six miles, the runners head west for approximately three miles and then return to the finish pretty close to where they started. As with all the races, the motto is the same, races for all paces. Some are looking to win, but all looking to have fun. In the end, it was Chris Lundstrom from Minneapolis taking the title. On the women's side, it was 16-year-old Mackenzie Holt from St. Cloud breaking the tape. There are the rest of the results. A good showing by the Minnesota men. And on the women's side, it was a youth movement, as three of the top five were under 16 years old, including the sisters from Andover. The next race of the day was the TC 5K, sponsored by Fredrickson and Byron. And just like the 10K, the turnout was incredible, as over 2,000 people signed up to run 3.1 miles. These races seem to get bigger and better every single year, and the mass of humanity on John Ireland Boulevard is a beautiful sight. It definitely was on the chilly side with the temps in the upper 20s, but that is what makes running such a great activity. You can do it no matter what the weather is. 2,000 people having a great time, enjoying a good stroll, and the beautiful fall colors were a nice little bonus. In the end, it was 22-year-old Jordan Carlson of Invergrove Heights taking down the field. There are the results. A nice fourth place finish for the 43-year-old Patrick Schulte. And on the women's side, our own Carrie Tollison had a very enjoyable day as she ran alongside her husband, Charlie. <laughs> Next on the full docket was the 10th annual Diana Pierce Family Mile. And it was just that, as the turnout of parents and kids was a great sight to see. Over 11,000 have participated in the history of the race. Watching all the young people get involved really made Diana happy, as she knows how important exercise is for young people. We've seen the obesity rate in children completely and dramatically rise through the years. And so I partnered up with the Twin Cities Marathon to create the Diana Pierce Family Mile because I felt that there weren't enough events out there for families to come and participate together. And there were plenty more races on Saturday. But before we go to break, we want to leave you with some wonderful images from the rest of the day. And remember, be sure to follow Twin Cities in Motion on Twitter to get all your running info.
the 2012 Medtronic Twin Cities Marathon is proud to partner with the following. the show. I'm Carrie Tullison. Sunday always features two amazing races, the Medtronic 10 Mile and the Medtronic Twin Cities Marathon. Tens of thousands of runners and just as many inspirational stories. I'm Jacob Volkman, 30 years old and from St. Louis Park, Minnesota. I wasn't much of a runner. I um, actually started five years ago when my mom wanted to do her first 5K and asked me to join her. Then worked up to a 10K, did a half marathon, uh, loved it, it felt great, and so I kept doing that and ran up to seven half marathons before I decided I was going to finally make the leap into my first full marathon. It's such a high and a rush where you just feel incredible on top of the world, um, that you are excited and just want to do another one right away. I had a uh, physical coming up for work that I was going to get my insurance discount needed to do a physical. I hadn't done it in a few years. They ran the blood work and then the results came back and my blood glucose was extremely high. So it surprised them and surprised me too. And, and that's how I found out that I had type 1 diabetes. I really thought that was going to be the end, not realizing it was actually just the beginning of a healthier lifestyle. Over time I was able to slowly get back into running and then I had to learn how many carbs do I take when running uh, in order to stay balanced. And I'm back to training for a full marathon. I'm very excited for it. I've done some long distance runs um, and figured out exactly how many carbs I should take while doing it. I'm able to check my blood sugar while running. Um, so I'm able to live a normal, healthy lifestyle again while managing the type 1 diabetes. I'm just excited to finish. I feel like it's, it's such a huge accomplishment to go from feeling like I was defeated when I learned about the disease to being able to take over and, and to, to really take control. Um, so for me, it's just going to be a huge sense of accomplishment to cross that finish line. Sunday morning at 7 a.m., and Jacob would still have an hour to go before he set off on his journey. But the Medtronic TC 10 mile was ready to start. A lot was riding on the line this year as a $10,000 prize was to be awarded to both the men's and women's winners. All right, have fun! An additional $12,000 would go to the overall race winner as the women were given a six minute and 31 second head start. A nice chunk of change for a Sunday morning run. Great crowds, tons of volunteers, and an overall great atmosphere for the first race of the day. Temps were in the upper 20s, but that didn't distract the 8,000 plus runners from making the morning trek from Minneapolis to St. Paul. In the end, although he said he never actually got warm on the run, it was Mo Treffe defending his title from 2011. Only 30 seconds separated the first five runners, and a strong showing from local 30-year-old Andrew Carlson. And in the women's race, it was another repeat performance, as U.S. Olympian Janet Cherubon Bakam won for the second consecutive year. She almost took home the extra 12 grand as the overall winner, but with only a half mile remaining, she was passed by Mo Treffe. But a great performance for Janet nonetheless. There's the rest of the top 10, with a couple current Minnesotans on the list, and a former one as well, as second place goes to the former Duluth East standout and two-time Olympian, Kara Goucher. 7.55 a.m. is the official start of the marathon, as the wheelers go off first. The favorite this year is the same favorite from last year and the year before. If it sounds repetitive, it's because Saul Mendoza practically owns this event. The 45-year-old Texan was looking for his fourth straight win and an unbelievable ninth career victory on this course. The course begins in downtown Minneapolis, runs along the chain of lakes to Lake Harriet, follows the fairly flat Minnehaha Parkway before reaching the halfway point at Lake Nokomis. Meanwhile, over 12,000 runners were getting ready for their 26.2-mile journey from the shadows of Mall of America Field. The great thing about running is that it means different things to different people. Some are out to win the race, some to beat their personal best, 
and some just to enjoy a beautiful fall slash early winter morning in beautiful Minnesota. As far as the runners, the lead pack was taking it fairly cautiously. Dealing with the unusual cold was definitely a factor. As many of the runners talked about how, even though they kept running, they had a hard time getting warm. The first 10 miles would be extremely slow compared to their normal pace, and the course record was never in jeopardy. But it would still turn out to be a great tactical race in the end. And for the thousands of other runners, it would be a bright sunny day as they made their way across the Twin Cities. And while the race is center stage, there's a whole lot more involved in the weekend. One of the great features this year was parked just past the finish line, the one and only Brooks Cavalcade of Curiosities. This 18 foot tall double decker bus has an unbelievable interactive display to showcase all of Brooks' latest running technologies. Make sure and follow its tour stops at brooksrunning.com. Twin Cities in Motion is proud to partner with Medtronic for the Medtronic Twin Cities Marathon Weekend. If you take the time to start slowly and build up your mileage and do training and be smart about it, anybody can do it. All you have to do is want to, and anybody can. Don Soul showing some serious courage. It has been three years since he had surgery to implant a pacemaker. An excellent selection as one of the 2012 Medtronic Global Heroes. Another feel-good story is 30-year-old Jacob Volkman of St. Louis Park. It was only one year ago that Jacob was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. He has plenty of family here to cheer him on, and he is really looking forward to crossing the finish line in his first marathon. In the second half of the course, runners follow the Mississippi River, cross into St. Paul, and climb to Summit Avenue, where they're greeted by thousands of cheering fans. And look who is just about there now, Saul Mendoza. This guy owns the course. His fourth straight victory and the ninth time that this 45-year-old has broken the tape here at the Medtronic Twin Cities Marathon. He continues to impress year after year after year. He is simply amazing. Here's a look at the rest of the results in the Wheeler Division. Cold weather kept the race for the men's title up in the air. There was a pack of 50 runners at the eight mile mark, as it seemed nobody wanted to try to break away. Not until the 21 mile mark, when the 2011 Grandma's Marathon winner, Chris Kipiego, made a move along the Mississippi River Boulevard. He said he looked back to see if anybody was going to chase. And when nobody did, he said he knew he had to keep going. And at four miles out, he knew it was his race. The 38-year-old Kenyan picked up $15,000 for the victory. A fellow African, Burhanu Girma of Ethiopia, took the silver. Here is a look at the top 10. Now back to the women, and it was Jeanette Faber with an amazing story. At the 14th mile mark, the 30-year-old was in seventh place and trailing the lead pack, but she thought if she could catch them, she'd maybe finish as high as four. She had planned on a conservative pace to start, around a 550 mile. So the cold wouldn't affect her and it was starting to pay off. One by one, the others were slowing and Jeanette went from seventh to sixth to fifth and so on, until she had finally passed them all and was in the lead. And that was it. Nobody had the energy to catch her and she went on to the victory, shattering her personal best by over four minutes. It was her first ever Medtronic Twin Cities Marathon, and she took home $15,000 for her efforts. Here's a look at the top 10, and as you can see, the weather did have an effect on the finishing times. A nice performance by the 40-year-olds holding down the 8th and 9th spots. And the celebration went on and on and on. It was a great day all throughout the course, and culminating with so many wonderful reactions at the finish line, including Don Sowell a 2012 Global Hero. This is his 17th completed marathon since his pacemaker was implanted in 2009. Now that is motivating. How was it out there? It was good. It was great. Wonderful crowds. Had a great time. The leader in marathon fundraising, Team World Vision, was well represented once again. Founded in 2005, this organization has raised over $5 million 
in an effort to help provide clean water to people around the world. Go to teamworldvision.org to see how you can get involved and help out the cause. And how about Jacob Volkman? Type 1 diabetes didn't slow him down. Amazing. Every mile I just got more and more confident that I would finish. I, it just felt absolutely incredible. Uh, I'm just so excited, so happy. Even though it was chilly, it was a fabulous weekend. And once again, it lived up to its billing. The most beautiful urban marathon in America. It's just one of the many events organized by Twin Cities in Motion. Keep up with them all at tcmevents.org. Thanks for joining us and get after it. Stay strong, stay strong. That was awesome. I really died. That was great.